Okay, thank you for the organizer as well uh, for giving me this uh, nice opportunity to present my works right here. Uh, the title of the talk is a block theory and dictated wave chaos in microcavity crystals. Uh, in this talk, I would like to first uh, introduce the basic concept of the chaotic optical microcavities and its latest implementations. And second, we will tackle the main topic of this talk. Uh, we will uh, demonstrate that the uh, effective equivalence between the block wave vectors in lattice systems and uh, the boundary deformation, the single cavity systems. Then the talk will be summarized and closed. Okay, the first question, what is optical microcavity? Optical microcavity is a mirrorless resonators uh, which achieve the light confinement inside the cavity uh, by the refractive index contrast uh, between the cavity itself and the, its environment. There are uh, various different kind of microcavities, for example, toroid, sphere, and crystalline cavities. Uh, they have a, a great potential in many applications such as on-chip light source and the cavity optomechanics. Among those listed microcavities, I am interested in the dielectric micro discs, and more precisely, uh, my uh, focus is on the uh, chaotic micro disc systems, which is deformed from the circular shapes. Okay, second question. Uh, what is the chaos? Let me explain it. Uh, given the dynamical systems, if the system is chaotic, the tiny, tiny deviations in a initial state can result in large differences in a final state, uh, which is referred to as well known uh, extreme sensitivity to initial conditions. There are many other uh, important concepts in uh, chaos theories. Uh, for example, ergodic theory and the, and the self-similarity, uh, that is uh, the uh, practicality. So a basic framework uh, of the micro disc is in the 2D billiard. And in billiard study, if uh, the particle dynamics inside the uh, billiard is uh, integrable, the, the trajectory of the particle motion inside the billiard is uh, regular and a corresponding phase space is filled by the invariant tori. On the other hand, if the particle motion inside of the billiard is chaotic, the particle trajectory inside the billiard is very complicated, and the uh, its its phase space is uh, exhibiting the ergodic properties. This phase space is given by the Birkhoff coordinate. The Birkhoff coordinate, let me explain it. Uh, given uh, the particle, uh, we launch the particle inside the, uh, the billiard, and each of the reflection point, uh, we record the, the arc lengths uh, where the particle uh, bounces off. And the momentum is it's a, a, a tangential component of the momentum uh, of the instant particle, uh, of instant particles. So, uh, and uh, in the previous slide, uh, I told you as if that there is a sharp distinction between the integral system and the chaotic systems. However, uh, that's not true. Uh, in fact, there is an intermediate regime in between the integral system and the, the chaotic systems. I will show you it. So, uh, this is the example of uh, the billiard uh, whose boundary is given by these uh, simplifications. So, uh, when this deformation parameter is uh, increased, uh, the integral system from the circle, the integrable uh, limit, uh, that is the circle, is changed to the chaotic ones. And before it gets uh, fully chaotic in the intermediate region, there is a somehow mixed region where the chaotic 
uh, C and the regular motion coexist in phase space. Okay, now let's look at the wave point of view. Uh, in wave uh, point of view, we solve, we obtain the stationary state by solving the Maxwell equation uh, to obtain the uh, optical mode, or uh, we solve the Schrodinger equation to obtain the eigen state. Uh, as I told you, our main focus is optical mode. So we solve the Maxwell equation uh, more precisely. We obtain we solve the Helmholtz equation derived from the Maxwell equations. Uh, as uh, we can see here, uh, in integral systems, uh, even though it's very difficult to recognize, uh, we can define uh, we well. We can find a well-defined mode or quantum number uh, for the chimusa or the radial directions. However, in in chaotic systems, we cannot. We cannot uh, identify such a, a good a quantum numbers in real space. Uh, here, uh, in order to confer the uh, wave properties in uh, classical phase space, we have to uh, introduce such uh, a quasi probability distributions. Here, I am using the Hushimi distribution functions, that is, uh, uh, projection of a wave onto a current state. Uh, in different uh, uh, descriptions, uh, it can be regarded as, as a smoothed, smoothed uh, the Wigner functions. Also, we can see that in integral systems, uh, their Hushin functions as are well uh, aligned and uh, localized such a uh, in, invariant totally like structures. However, in chaotic systems, we can see that their Hushin function spreading in whole entire uh, phase space. Uh, we can uh, solve the uh, Helmholtz equations uh, depending on the deformation parameter epsilon. Here, uh, we examine the case where the boundary shape is uh, given by uh, this equation. And uh, this uh, boundary shape uh, preserves the C4 symmetry. Here, I would like to emphasize one point uh, in a circular limit, that is the, the deformation parameter equal zero, then the uh, even, even, and the odd, odd, that is the uh, mode parity with respect to x axis and y axis, if uh, the boundary shape is a, a circular shape, then the even, even, and the odd, odd mode are degenerated while even, odd, or the even mode are degenerated. Uh, these pairs are uh, such a, a degenerate pairs in circular limit. Uh, however, uh, if uh, we are given the non-zero deformation parameters, then the even even and ordered pair will uh, split uh, each other. On the other hand, uh, even odd and odd even mode will uh, still preserve their degeneracies even when uh, non-zero deformation is applied. Okay, what is this? Uh, okay, let's see it explicitly. Here, I illustrate uh, the even, even, and all the cases by the simple symmetry rotating over left. However, we can see that their wave functions are not the same. On the other hand, uh, uh, even, odd, and odd, even case rotate over left, and we can see that they are exactly the same. It means that in a C4 symmetry boundary shapes, the mode even, odd and odd even mode are just uh, uh, 90 degree uh, rotated once each other. Here are some uh, computed examples of the even, even and odd, odd modes. Here are also the examples of uh, the Hushin functions corresponding to the obtained real space wave functions. Uh, this is a uh, uh, even, odd and odd even cases. Uh, here, I would like to emphasize one important point. Uh, among these uh, states, we can see many of uh, scar states. Uh, scar states is, uh, uh, simply speaking, that the localized state on unstable periodic orbit in uh, real space and the localized on the unstable fixed point in uh, phase space. So let me paraphrase. Uh, 
based on the original papers. The scar is firstly coined by the Eric J. Heller 90, uh, in his paper published in 1984. The essence is that uh, uh, while the general uh, pre the expectation was that uh, a fully chaotic system only can have uh, uh, well-spread wave functions. Uh, uh, the real observation was a counter-intuitive because they uh, observed many wave functions can have enhanced density around unstable periodic orbits. Now let's turn our attention to the chaotic cavity in lattice systems. Unlike the single cavity systems, now we have to consider both the intra-cavity mode couplings as well as the inter-cavity mode couplings. Okay, to consider the latest system is a chaotic microcavity in scale lattices. The, the cavity, the boundary of the cavity is given by, again, the CPO symmetric and uh, these uh, CPO symmetric uh, cavities, which are con uh, consisting the atomic site in the lattices, uh, is, a, is a mixed system, as I explained before. And this, uh, we will solve the, the Helmholtz equations to obtain the optical mode in this chaotic market cavity in scale lattices. Uh, because we are now dealing with the, the lattice systems, our parameter space is extended to include uh, the block wave vectors into the KXKY in addition to the single cavity parameter, deformation parameters, epsilons. And uh, so we can solve, uh, we can obtain the optical mode uh, as a function of deformation epsilon. At the same time, we can solve the uh, optical mode, obtain the optical mode uh, as a function of the flow wave vector case. By computing, uh, by uh, fixing, while fixing the crystal momentum below momentum equal zero, we compute the, the preliminary uh, uh, optical mode. And we, it turns out that uh, if uh, the crystal momentum is zero, the uh, obtained uh, optical frequencies in single cavity and the cavity lattice can have a really, really uh, uh, similar structures as when we apply these uh, frequencies as a function of deformation parameter epsilons. Uh, here I highlighted some of them. We will uh, particularly uh, focused on, on the mode where uh, which she localized on the vertical and the horizontal uh, unstable periodic orbits. That is the uh, scar, the degenerated scars here. Even though uh, when the crystal momentum uh, equal zero, they are degenerated when you turn on the crystalline momentum that is the block momentum is not a zero, then we can obtain the, the dispersive wave frequencies uh, we can observe here. And uh, in some direction of the block momentum, then uh, some of the wave function shows their hybridized state. And we will consider this degenerated, uh, the vertical and horizontal uh, scar state as our uh, pseudo spins in later. So the pseudo spin, states in, in, in K spaces show the quadratic band touching at the gamma and the M point. Where is the gamma M point? Okay, here. Gamma and M point here. Now, uh, here I will show you uh, the explicit evolution of these two pseudo spin uh, states according to the variation of the uh, block wave vectors. So by changing blow vector directions, we can obtain the evolution of the slow spin states. 
uh, we can describe this uh, the obtain the quadratic band touching uh, based on the the C -po symmetry of the uh, cavity boundaries. So we can describe the quadratic band touching by this effective Hamiltonian, and it will describe the smooth spin two scar states. Uh, the main ingredient of the this uh, the effective Hamiltonian is uh, the coupling between uh, this delta coupling between the two states and uh, the relative energy shift of the two states. Okay, here I write down the explicit form of the effective Hamiltonian and this is a value of them. As we can see, if the kx and the ky equal zero means that the gamma a point, uh, this uh, splitting plus minus energy the deviation will vanishes. Now we will translate this uh, block momentum uh, induced uh, to uh, spin state splittings uh, in a single cavity boundary deformations. Our strategy is uh, that given the original uh, CPO symmetry uh, cavities, we will uh, realize the V0 means that the relative energy shift by elongating, uh, by elongating uh, the cavities in the diagonal directions. And the uh, mode couplings uh, will be realized by elongating the cavities in the vertical and horizontal directions. So this is the final form of the designed single cavity boundary shapes. Here the pi, here the pi, corresponded to the direction of the the uh, block wave vectors in lattice systems. So by changing this phi, we can compare the energy, uh, the dispersions in the single cavity systems and the lattice systems. Okay, so we will compare the lattice. Uh, uh, the energy dispersion sense in lattice systems by changing the 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 directions of the, the block wave vectors and uh, by changing this phi uh, in the boundary deformations so we can see that uh, this uh, design the boundary deformation in single cavity well uh, reproduce uh, the energy dispersion obtained uh, from the uh, lattice systems here, I will show you explicitly that the resemblance between them. So we already observed that the, the uh, wave uh, two pseudo spin state evolutions according to the variation of the wave vectors in lattice systems. Here, we realize that the boundary deformations can mimic uh, almost the same structure of the evolution of the uh, pseudo spin uh, development according to the Wave vectors, because as we have learned repeatedly, that the boundary deformation uh, can result in the phase phase modifications. So we also can obtain this change of uh, the phase phase uh, evolutions. Also, uh, now we are ready to compare the pushing functions obtained based on the state in the lattice systems and uh, the phase space. Uh, realized through the uh, effective deformations in single cavity. So pushing function can uh, evolve according to these deformation changes we designed. Now, okay, uh, how much time? Okay, then uh, I will briefly um, turn our attention to, uh, okay. Now here I will come up with uh, uh, some some interesting questions uh, uh, that what happened if we apply the boundary deformations even in the lattice systems? Okay, this is the answer uh, based on, uh, from the c symmetry uh, cavity shape in, in the lattice. If we apply in certain directions uh, uh, the, the boundary shape deformations, then we can reduce the c symmetry cavity shapes to the mirror reflection symmetry cavities in the lattice. Then the c symmetry 
the quadratic band touching uh, based on the, the simple symmetric shape of the boundary uh, as a change is to uh, two uh, pair of uh, the uh, dracons. Then we can further distort this uh, mirror reflection symmetry. Then we can get out these uh, two paired uh, dracons. Uh, and this, uh, this uh, uh, gap the, the, the dracons can, uh, can induce the, the finite, finite at value of the, the uh, Berry curvatures. And because we are having the Berry curvatures, we can use it for the applications of the light, uh, steering of the light uh, transportations through these semi-classical uh, equations. Uh, here, as we can see, simple symmetry, the instant wave only can uh, propagate in the original directions. And the mirror symmetry as well. The, these two cases have, uh, have no uh, so finite value of the very curvature. So however, uh, the gap to our gap to systems, uh, they are non zero uh, very curvatures uh, can induce the, uh, this kind of skew, uh, symmetry uh, steered uh, the wave propagations. Uh, okay, here, in order to realize this uh, steered light propagations, uh, we have to also uh, set up uh, the, the gradient of the, the propagation vectors we can uh, we can we can consider uh, this uh, by uh, we can consider the, the refractive index variations uh, as on the, the k dot here so by this uh, setup we can obtain the the light to uh, steered light to propagations okay this is the summary we have learned that uh, uh, block wave vector a key in lattices can be equivalently translated into the boundary deformation in single cavities. And uh, in the final uh, topics, we have seen that the deformation of a cavity in a lattice can induce uh, steered light propagations. Thank you for your kind attentions. Thank you. Thank you for a very nice talk. And do you have a question? More comment? Okay. So, uh, in the previous slide, I think you uh, mentioned some like there is the Berry curvature. Okay. So, uh, okay, this is due to the uh, uh, some uh, mirror symmetry breaking. What, what can can you explain in terms of the optical uh, optical lattice point of view? Like in lattice systems or condensed matter system, we have some kind of inversion symmetry breaking. Then we have this non-zero very curvature, okay. and then yeah, we get anomalous transport. So okay, what, here, uh, here, mm -hmm. the the green. Uh, can you identify the green curve? Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, green curve is the phase of the C pole symmetry. Okay. Likewise, in the lattice systems, is a pole lattice is there. Okay. Pole point there and the C pole symmetry, right? Okay. Okay. Then we distort elongation in this direction or this direction. Okay. So this is like some kind of strain. Uh, That's right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Do you have a more question or comment? Okay. Yes. Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, I guess I lost uh, your explanation. You compare something between the block K in lattice and mm -hmm. deformed microcavity, what becomes the same? What uh, becomes the same? What is becomes the same? Uh, first, uh, energy is the same. Eigenvalue, you mean? Eigenvalue, yeah. energy is the same. And uh, uh, we cannot guarantee 100%, uh, only we can see the energy dispersions. So we have checked that eigenstate also res resemble all whether or not. Uh, eigenstates means the spatial pattern? Spatial, yes, wave function states. Wave function are the same. Yes, that's right. Uh, in single microcavity, the eigenvalues have to be complex. Uh, yes, you're right. You you're right means you're right. the only real parts. Yes, you're, yes, you're right. Okay. You're right. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. Do you have more question or comment? Yeah. Uh, I have one question. Uh, yeah, when you calculate the skew transportation, in that case, you calculate the uh, gradient of this reflective index. Is there some realistic uh, experimental suggestion? Uh, okay. Uh, also, I'm not 100% uh, sure, but uh, there is uh, some method. The first method would be controlling the temperatures, even though, as you can see, the, the scaling here, the maximum and the minimum refractive index difference could be very, very low. Even this mm -hmm. small value could, could induce this kind of steering. And temperature, uh, dielectric materials is in inherently have uh, their temperature dependent ref refractive index properties. Mm -hmm. So one method could be, and uh, another method is a kind of uh, uh, by changing the material density or something like that, mm -hmm. then I think it can Indeed. be realized. Metamaterials. Or something like yeah. that. Okay, thank you. And do you have more question or comment? If, if not, then let's close this session. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you for a really nice talk and all of the speakers and audience.